When the Back to Godhead magazine arrives in the mail, I'm usually content to sit in my comfortable home temple to read about the exotic spiritual destinations of adventurous devotees halfway around the world. The January-February 2000 issue was no exception, at least I thought, until I read the feature article about a pilgrimage to the remote village of Ahobalam in south-central India, the very place in the universe where Lord Nasinghadev, the half-lion, half-man incarnation of Lord Krishna, burst out of a palace pillar to save his devotee Prahlad from his demonic father, Hiranyakashipu. Scattered in the surrounding jungle, there are nine ancient temples celebrating different features of the ferocious and merciful Lord Nishringa. There is also the remains of the gigantic pillar from which the Lord appeared. But this is also tiger country, an enormous national reserve for endangered animals, including wild bears. It is perilous and halfway around the world from where I sat. But a 21-year-old devotee, Druva, had visited all those places of pilgrimage and lived to write about it. My initiated name is Nishringananda Das, the servant of the blissful Lord Nishringa. How could I live with myself if I couldn't say that I had been in those same places of pilgrimage of my namesake? I knew then that I would soon be following in the footsteps of this young adventurer. What I didn't know then was that he would be our guide, and I would be his companion on part of his own continuing search for the lost temples of Lord Nishringa. I caught up with Druva in a small village two hours north of Hyderabad. He took our video crew to a temple on the road less traveled. I don't know if any non-Indians had ever visited this little-known Nishringa temple. Sitting below the entry gate, the temple did not seem particularly unique. The deity seemed quite accessible. However, that was a deity constructed by humans. The Swayambhuva, or self-manifested one, was a couple hundred yards behind this one. Our crew of Yadubara, my brother-in-law George, and myself had yet to face some of our worst fears. We were about to enter what appeared to be a temple of doom. The water was not too cold, but it wasn't the cleanest water we'd ever seen. The bats overhead were not too happy about the video light, and the gigantic cockroaches that called this place home were scattering like Superman from kryptonite. I have no idea what I'm stepping on. You're just stepping on stones. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> just keep telling yourself that. <laughs> I am sure by the squishing under my toes, bats bury their dead in water. Lord Nishringa always seems to reside on the sides of mountains or in caves, like a mountain lion. We wondered if we were the only ones to brave the elements of this pilgrimage, and we certainly did not expect to see any light at the end of this tunnel. Boy, were we surprised. Turning a corner, we found ourselves witnessing a full-on Vedic marriage ceremony. Local villagers take darshan of this deity often, and they obtain the blessing of Lord Nishringa for many of the milestones in their lives. I couldn't believe it. The bride had submerged herself in her wedding sari to come take darshan of the Lord. The groom looked quite spiffy, despite his own swim, and the parents appeared to take it all in stride. The Pujari was completely oblivious to the sudden appearance of lights, camera, action, with a group of whites behind the scenes. The show must go on, and go on it did. There are a lot of mantras, prayers to invoke. The deity was given an abhishek, or bath, of different elements, including milk, ghee, yogurt, sandalwood, etc. His face was rather worn smooth, like a baby's skin, by all the affection. Nobody knows how this deity was made. According to the oral tradition, the Lord manifested it here and then told a Brahmin about it in a dream. My brother-in-law, a doctor and a Catholic, arrived from the U.S. a couple days ago. Welcome to mystical India. Maybe the jet lag, the heat, and the lack of oxygen back here has reduced his resistance to anything out of the ordinary. Druva is most amazing because he has a natural attraction for Lord Nishringa. He brought us here as a prelude to the pilgrimage in Ahobalam. He has the real bhakti, devotion, for this wonderful form of Krishna. Once we're out of this cave, he will also be your guide and hopefully your friend too. Now that the wedding is over, 
the bride and groom dog paddle their way back to their honeymoon. May Lord Nishringa bless your marriage. And if you ever start to argue, just paddle back to take darshan of the Lord. I'm sure you'll forget what you are going to bicker about by the time you get here, and everything will be hunky-dory. Emerging from the back cave, we were directed to the pristine spring that mysteriously comes from the same water. We happily bathed our bodies, though our minds had already been purified by the unusual darshan. Once back on the road, we thought we were on the way to Ahobalam, but Druva had other plans. Our route took us to the Krishna River, which transverses nearly the entire birth of India. It was heavily used for transportation and trade for many centuries. Nishringa temples were built on its banks, and Druva had heard of a couple that he didn't want he or us to miss. The first was unique in that the Nishringa deity was in the river. He could be touched by swimming out to him, which we all did. The cool river was a refreshing respite from the heat, and gaining Lord Nishringa's darshan in this manner served many purposes. Overlooking the deity, a temple accommodates many pilgrims who come from distant places to take darshan. Situated above the river, another self-manifested deity of Lord Nishringadev beckons Druva to his darshan. We're sitting next to Jwala Nishringaswami, which is on top of a little hill. And <clears throat> it's famous because Jwala was being worshipped by many of his devotees, but for some reason they could not handle his worship because Jwala means burning, emanating flames of fire. So he was so hard to worship that they just, they gave up. Becoming angry of this, he ran away. The Lord ran away and he, man he, he situated himself on top of this hill and was covered by an anthill. So the anthill has gone away now, but this is the top of the, the Didi, or the Swayambhu, the Shalagram, and they say underneath is the form of Jwala Nishringa, emanating flames. He's leaving no stone unturned or mountain unclimbed in his quest for finding temples of Lord Nishringa. Not far away was an off-road temple that some devotees, sometime in antiquity, had constructed with much love and devotion. We had to ford an irrigation canal, hike through somebody's fields, and hoof up a steep terrain to get to it. Welcome to the temple of Vira Nishringaswami. Vira, Vira means fighting. He just emerged from the pillar, right? So he's ready to fight. Vira, and he grabs Hiranya by the head, and he started playing with him like a cat plays with a mouse. Vira Nishringa, fighting. He manifests to the seven sacred rishis, and they worship him here on this hill. I'd have to have a GPS locator to find my way back. I don't know how Druva knows about these places. He hears about them from other Nishringa Bhaktas and then seeks them out. This one has been abandoned for God knows how long. An occasional Bhakta will trek up to it from the local area. I doubt any Westerner has been here before. I feel privileged, awed, and sad. Lord Nishringa deserves better. Perhaps he needs a little protection himself. Back on the road, we're again on our way to Ahobalam. At last, Ahobalam, only recently discovered by Western pilgrims. It still has only one main street, reminiscent of small settlements in the old wild west of the USA. But instead of a ubiquitous white church, an ancient Lakshmi Nishringa temple predominates life here. This is not one of the nine temples of pilgrimage, but Druva takes us here first in order to beg blessings from the Lord in his most formal form. The village is rapidly transitioning from an isolated jungle outpost to a bustling spiritual tourist destination. The Jir is the spiritual guide of Ahobalam. He's the 45th in his disciplic succession. He was present during our brief stay, and there was much pomp and circumstance swirling around his presence. Usually he's traveling from village to village, spreading the Vedic way of life. Ahobalam is one of the 108 Vaishnav Divya Deshams. It is here that Sri Garuda did penance and realized Krishna. The Mahabharat, Kurma Purana, Padma Purana, and Vishnu Purana mention Ahobalam and its presiding deity Nasingha. The Brahmanda Purana says that this place was once the palace of Hiranyakashipu. With luck, we would stand on top of that holy pillar. Having taken darshan and prayed for protection, we were now ready to embark on our mission 
to record the pilgrimage to the nine sacred temples of Upper and Lower Ahobalam. Lakshmi Kataksha Sarasi Ruha Raja Ghamsam Pakshindra Shaila Bhavanam Bhavanashamisham Gokshira Sara Ghana Sara Pati Well, welcome to the Bhargava Kund, where Bhargava Rishi, he used to take bath and he used to take water to bathe the Ugrana Didi, which we're about to see, which is Bhargava. And it's very sacred because Bhargava Rishi desired, he was doing heavy tapas and he desired to see the Lord at the exact moment when he was tearing Hiranyakashipu apart. So the Lord granted him that desire and he appeared before him while he was ripping, he showed him that darshan. And then Bhargava Rishi asked the Lord to manifest in that form. No one knows how old this deity is, Bhagavan Nishrana Swami. We know that it was worshipped by hundreds and hundreds of saintly rishis over the years. It was worshipped by Ramanuja Acharya himself. This is the most ferocious, or one of the most ferocious forms in, of the nine Nava forms in Hobalam. And he's ferocious but merciful. And yet Prahlad just so fearlessly standing on the side with his hands folded, just having darshan of the Lord, because he already knew the Lord was going to appear in this form, as the Lord showed him earlier. So he had no fear at all. And you have your running Kashipu totally helpless, spread about here, just like, what do I do? He's got, Lord Nishrini, he's got his arm hooked. He can't do anything. And he's staring at you. It's almost like he's looking at you. And that's the form. He gave darshan in this form, Lord Nishunga gave to Bhargava Rishi. And while he was giving darshan, while he was ripping Hiranyakashipu apart, Hiranyakashipu looked at Bhargava Rishi. And that's the exact form he manifested in. And we have all the ten incarnations surrounding him as his effulgence. And chakra and sunk. And normally, it's what's a rare thing about him is he doesn't have the intestines coming out because when he manifests he was ripping his stomach open that's when he was most angry was when he finally caught a hold of him like a cat grabs a mouse and he just dug his fingernails into him that's Ugra Yoga means merciful. Yoga Nishringa is the most merciful form. This deity is very special because no one knows anything about him, the history, all, all, all that we know from some of the uh, acharyas or jeers of this place is that he came from a cave many hundreds of years ago. He was taken from a cave. Because in that cave there were so many tunnels and uh, going up and down, you had to crawl, you had to walk, you had to climb, you had to slide. So many Pujaris, they were never found again after they went in the cave. Because all the different tunnels led to different places. But the main tum tunnel went to an inner sanctum that opened up. A huge like a temple inside there with carvings everywhere. On the Srinidhi's pastimes, and it said that Krishna's pastimes, everything was in there. And in the center was a beautiful deity of Yoga and Shringa, which we, we see now. Since many people, are, they never found them again, so they presume they died. After times, they, they stopped going in there. Finally, they decided they wanted to have this deity because it was one of the nine forms. And then they linked up with each other, all the pujaris, and they managed to bring the deity out. And he's been here ever since. He was in there but because of the desires of his devotees. Now he's come here for all of us. This is yoga, yoga asana. He has the band across his, his two knees, he's keeping the legs together. Perfect yoga pose, yoga nishringa. He's Shanti. 
at this point, Prahlad and him, they, he taught Prahlad Maharaj yoga in this particular pose of yoga nishram. And he has chakra and kanch on each side. Simhasyam tikshnadam shram trinayana mudayad bhanu koti prakasham hastair dambhoni dhara patushita nakharai daitya vaksho vidarya datva devavrajasya bhayam apijavaram shankha chakre Dadhanam Lakshmi Yuktam Prashantam Shritajana Sulabham Vishnum Adyam Namami Vishnum Adyam Nutranakkaya Vidmahe Tikshadam Sravit Nashinna Pragor Jate Swami. He's in sitting in yoga posture because this is the way he, he manifests to two devas or dancers that were dancing here in, in Hobalandam. They were dancing for his benefit. They were dancing and dancing so beautifully and so with love and devotion that the Lord manifests before them and asked them to, you know, he would grant them any desire. They wanted, and all they asked for was that he would manifest in the most beautiful form, the happiest form. So he manifests in this form of Chatravata, smiling, Narasimha Swami. Huge smile, so beautiful. With giving blessings to all the devotees in the age of Kali Yuga. That was their main condition, that he would give blessings to the devotees. And so he's situated in yoga asana, which is, this asana is the hardest asana. It's not possible for him to do this. Only the Lord can do this. And he has lotus flower on the backside of his foot here. And he has toe rings here. And in his lotus hand, he has rings on each finger. And you can see his nails, how beautiful and sharp they are and all of his jewelry. He's such a wonderful, wonderful deity. We're here at Karanjana Shringa Swami Temple. We're at the new temple. They renovated it. It's quite different compared to the first time I came when it was just a tiny, beautiful little temple. No doors, nothing, no pujari. Next to the old temple was a small temple of Anjanaya. Anjanaya is the son of the wind god, which is Hanuman. This beautiful form of the Lord manifest here because one day Hanuman was doing tapas here in Ahobalam. He was sitting in meditation, wrapped up in his tail, and then he was chanting Ram, Ram, Ram. All of a sudden, Lord Nishingadev appeared before him and said, Yes, you are calling me. Again, Hanuman looks up and says, What is, what is this nonsense? You are disturbing me, my tapas. If you do not leave, I will... I will destroy you, or I will make you leave. And then, so Nrsingadev said, no, you don't understand, I am Ram. I am all. And then Hanuman said, so then, how can you be Ram? This is not Ram's form. And Lord Nrsingadev manifests his form with bow and chakra. He manifests like that with one single hood of Ananta Sesha over his head. In, in yoga posture. So he manifests as basically like Ram with Srinidhi's face. And then Hanuman was totally convinced. So he paid his obeisances and asked the Lord to stay so that he could worship him. So Hanuman worshipped his deity of Karanjana Shringa. <laughs> The fourth time ago when I was here, um, I slept up on top of this temple, the Ugra Srinaswami temple. The Pujari 
which took Indra Swami in 1979, he told my guide, you tell these, this boy that while he's sleeping, if, if the ground starts to tremble and he hears some roars and fighting, like two mad elephants are fighting, not to worry, it is only the Lord. I inquired more the next time I came, and I, I learned that the Pujaris, they hear. Sometimes it feels like an earthquake, and they hear like a roar, you know. The Pujaris were telling me like this. Inside that doorway, all the pilgrims are now coming out, is Ugra Swami, which is Swayambhu, and was worshipped by Prahlad Maharaj himself. Inside a beautiful cave, he's only about this size, and absolutely amazing because when all of his armor is off you can see the shalagam he's tearing apart Hiranya and Hiranya is lying across his knee and Prahlad Maharaj is on the side and he's been worshipped for thousands of years and he's the main form of a hobalam he's called um, the hobala narishima wonderful wonderful narishima they call him The reason this is, is an amazing place is because so many saintly rishis, they would do tapas in another cave just up from this one, and they would come and worship Krota Nishringa, take bath in the uh, beautiful stream of the waterfall coming from the pillar. Now they've made a beautiful renovation made more room so many pilgrims can come and do puja every day inside this small cave. Crota, the story, we don't know exactly why he appeared and how old he is, but we know that many sacred rishis have come and worshipped him. It's very old deity, so here we can see there's his legs, his right leg and his right arm, which is resting on the thigh of his right leg, and his left one, which is raised up in his knee here in his thigh, and there's his left arm coming up, and on his shoulder, Sri Budevi is sitting. And there's his, his face, his eye, his mouth, his nostril of a boar, perfect, you can see his nose, everything. And Budevi has her right arm just around his nostril. And there's his crown and his ear, Faraha Nishinga. Bhargava, Lakshmi Nishringa, Yoga Nishringa, Chakravata Nishringa, Karanja Nishringa, Ugra Nishringa, Krodha Nishringa, Namoholoha Nishringa. This is the seventh form of the Nava Nishringas in Hobalam. So amazing because at this place where the temple is, is situated a kund that comes out of a tree. Lakshmi Devi was doing heavy tapas so that the Lord would come and marry her. So she was doing penance under this tree, fasting completely. And by this tapas, the tree created a uh, perpetual spring for her. Out of his tapas and love for her, he created this. And it flows just behind the temple. And that's, this is the significance of this place, is where Lakshmi did tapas to marry Lord Nishringadev. And after she had done it and the Lord was pleased, he married her. And this is Mohalo Nishringaswami. He's so old that you can hardly see his form anymore. His face, Lakshmi Devi, the feet, it's very difficult to see this. And they have put a new deity underneath him so that people can sharply see his beautiful features, face, smile. Out of all the deities, the head pujaris and everyone say that this is the most merciful form because Lakshmi Devi is in so happy that the Lord is marrying her. So she is giving blessings and blessings and blessings and many women they're always coming here. If they cannot have child, they come and they pray to Lakshmi and they hang their 
They hang pieces of their saris with jewels, with stones, whatever the possessions they have, they hang them on the trees. And they uh, offer this to her. And so they get blessed and like this. So. Namaste Narasimhaya Praklada Klada Dagine Kiranya Kashipur Vakshashila Tanka Nakana Ye 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 Abhyayam Abhyayam Atmani it's so hard to see this form of Pavana Nishinga. Along the way, there's so many paths if you don't have a guide then it's very difficult to find him. At this temple, it's believed that at night, no one stays here, because at night, the demigods come to worship the Lord. Sometimes you'll see bears, they will come and circumambulate the temple at night, which they did when I was sleeping in here. Now they're building this new temple for him, and a shelter and everything. You can see he's just relaxing with Lakshmi on his left knee and with Ananta Seish over his head. Um, this deity is very special because after Lakshmi, the final marriage of her and Lord Nishingadev, in this form they manifest. So this is the form, they're both very happy and giving blessings and blessings. Also on the side here, we have Gopal and Krishna playing the flute. Going to Gurukul, my father would let me do puja on the main Nishringadev deity's altar and help dress the deity. And so I was inspired ever since then, doing puja to him. And just in the recent years, it's become stronger to the point that I just want to find his temples, every temple. So this is the place where Prahlad Maharaj and all of his friends, they would play and do school here. Traditionally, in the old days, the school was done outside because of the atmosphere. It would help them study more. And when the rishis would come, they would all stay in these little caverns on the side. They would be sheltered from the rain. And then they would come up and have darshan and do big pujas, while at the same time looking over the cliff at the Uganeshwami Swami Temple. So it's very amazing. And the pujaris here believe that it's the best place to come and study the Vedas, Bhagavatam, because of the atmosphere and of yoga, shanti, peace. He gives peace in the mind and body. What is amazing about this deity is he has three eyes and never will you see a deity of Yoga Nishin with the third eye. Third eye means Ugra, anger. And it's believed by the villagers that on these walls in the cave all Prahlad Maharaj would be writing the Lord's name. Om Naro, Om Namo Narayana, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya like this in Sanskrit all over the walls in here. Aho bidam nara simham gatva rama pratapavan namaskritva shrinra simham asto shit kamala patim Ugra Stamba, Jwala Nishinga. This is the pillar in which the divine killer Lord Nishinga emerged from to kill the demon Hiranya. And just above this little cliff here resides Jwala Nishinga, the exact spot where he tore apart Hiranyakashipu. It's inside a cave. 
ಗೋಖಂಡಂಡಂ ಪರವರ ವಿರಟಂ ಡಂ ಪಡಂ ಪೋರುಡಂ ಪಂ ಡಿಂ 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 ಬಂ ದಹಮಿ ದಹ ವೈ ಜಂಪ ಜಂಪೈಶ್ಚ ಜಂಪೈ For the last thousands of years, people have been coming up this difficult trail to see the Lord, asking for His blessings. People from the age of five years to the age of 80, even 90-year-old, old men and women, they come here, and then they climb to the Stamba. It is said that if you do not come to Juala or the Stamba, then what is the point of coming to Ahoblam? These two places give you the most benefit coming to Ahoblam because they're the hardest to get to. You have to just really work and climb and climb and suffer and you finally come and sit in front of him and pray and he blesses you. Now we're coming into Raktakun, Hiranyakashipu's blood. This is Raktakun. And we can see the blood coming out of the wall here. Inside this little cave. No one knows where it comes from, but that's where it originates. And there's water streaming out of there. And then it flows down into the waterfall. And you have a crystal clear kun that you can bathe in. And this is right in front of the Jwala Nishrima Temple. <laughs> We're in Jwala Nishringa's cave here. And there's three forms of Lord Nishringa Dev. There's Stanu. Stanu means emerging from the pillar. And there's Hiranyakashipu and Pralat and the pillar around him. And then Jwala Nishringa tearing to pieces Hiranyakashipu, Pralad Maharaj on the side. Jwala means fire, anger. He was so angry, he was burning. And then uh, Vira Nishringa, fighting Nishringa, on the side over there. The significance of this place is that it has the three fo forms, how it happened. Stano, he emerged from the pillar. Vira, he fought with him, he grabbed him. And Jwala, he destroyed him. ಜರ್ಜಂಕಚಕಚಕಚಿತ್ಖರ್ಜುರ್ಜಯಂತೂಭಾಗಂಭೋಗಭಾಗಂಗಗಗಗಗನಂ We're on top of the pillar, Ugra Stamba. This is the exact spot where Lord Nishringadev appeared. The pillar is not still standing, you see, because he burst out of the pillar. So the whole entire pillar went this way and that way. Destroyed everything for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of miles. So then he, uh, what is left is where his lotus feet stood. We are standing on top of that. And Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came here when he was doing his South Indian pilgrimage. He stood in this very spot. So this is a very amazing place. You're on top of the world, you can see everything. You see, before this was something, something was here. What can we say? We don't know. But the local Stala Purana, their history, they believe this was once 
Hiranyakashipu's palace, the Lord did appear here to please his devotees and give them darshan in the age of Kali Yuga. Yena Brahm Garjamanam Lagu Lagu Makaru Bala Chandrar Kadam Stro Hemam Bhojam Sarojam Jata Jata Jatilo Yadjamanas to be the Dantanam Badhamanam Kagata Kagata Bojayan Surendro Nish 